We want to find the equation of a degree three polynomial function with real coefficients having zeros or roots of x equals negative two with multiplicity two and x equals three with multiplicity one. The function also passes through the point two comma eighty. So to find our polynomial function, we'll find the function in factored form or the form f of x equals a constant a times a factor of x minus r sub one times a factor of x minus r sub two, times a factor of x minus r sub three, and so on, where r sub one, r sub two, r sub three, and so on, are the roots or zeros of the polynomial function. Remember the roots or zeros of the function are the values that make the function equal to zero. So each given root or zero will make each of these factors equal to zero, and therefore the function value would be equal to zero. So we'll start by determining our factors and then because we're given the point two comma eighty, the second step will be to determine the value of a. So we'll start with f of x equals a times, our first root is x equals negative two, so this factor would have to be x minus negative two or x plus two. But notice how we're told this root has a multiplicity of two, which means this is a double root or double zero, which means we have two factors of x plus two. Notice if we substitute negative two for x, this factor would be zero, and therefore the function value would also be zero. The second zero is x equals three, so we'd have a factor of x minus three, and this root has a multiplicity of one, so we only have one factor of x minus three. Again, notice if we substitute three for x, this factor would be zero, therefore the function value would be equal to zero. Now we can determine the value of a. If the function contains the point two comma eighty, then that means f of two must equal eighty. So if we substitute two for x, we'd have a times, this would be two plus two or four squared, and this would be two minus three, which is negative one, and this function value must equal eighty. If we simplify the left side here, we'd have a times sixteen times negative one, that's negative sixteen a equals eighty. Divide both sides by negative sixteen. We have a equals negative five. So the equation of our polynomial function would be f of x equals negative five times two factors of x plus two times a factor of x minus three. Now if we're allowed to leave our function in factored form, this would be our polynomial function. But if we wanted the polynomial in general form, we would have to multiply this out. And for this example, I'll go ahead and show that. Let's go ahead and expand this. We'd have f of x equals negative five times two factors of x plus two times a factor of x minus three. Remember, multiplication is commutative, which means we can multiply this in any order. Let's start by multiplying these two binomial factors. So we'll have four products here. One, two, three, and four. X times x is x squared. X times two is two x plus two times x. So we have another two x, so that's plus four x. Plus two times two, that's four and then times x minus three. Now we'll go ahead and multiply this trinomial and binomial. So we'll have f of x equals negative five, and we'll have x squared times x, that's x cubed. And we'll have x squared times negative three, that's negative three x squared. And four x times x plus four x squared. Four x times negative three minus twelve x four times x plus four x, and finally four times negative three, that's negative twelve or minus twelve. Now let's go ahead and combine the like terms. 
we'd have f of x equals negative 5 times x cubed. Here we'd have plus x squared. This would be minus 8x and minus 12. And now we'll distribute negative 5. So we'd have f of x equals negative 5x cubed minus 5x squared plus 40x and plus 60. So this would be the same polynomial function in general form. Now let's verify this by looking at the graph of our function. Notice that the root of x equals negative 2, which has an even multiplicity, or in this case multiplicity 2, it touches the x-axis, but it doesn't cross it. This is how the function behaves when the multiplicity is greater than or equal to 2 and even. And over here on the right, notice how the function crosses the x-axis at positive 3. So this does verify this graph has the correct zeros or roots. Also notice that x equals 2, the function contains the point 280. So this verifies that our work is correct.